Okay. So, are we all first years here? No? So we've got first years over here, I'm guessing. Who's second year? And we've got any third years? No third years? All right, cool. So, um, as Jonathan said, I did graduate from the MDD program um, two or three years ago now. Um, but now I'm sort of not working in the area of um, organic synthesis and sort of making compounds. I'm working in an area more about proteins um, and other types of compounds which have the potential to be used as drugs. So um, one thing that our research group is particularly interested in are Australian frogs, and in particular the chemicals that Australian frogs make to protect themselves against predators and other bugs. And these chemicals are all stored and secreted from um, special glands in their skin, which are, you can see here behind it, the head of the animal, we've got these large protrusions, and these here are the skin glands of the animal. And basically, when the um, animal is attacked by a predator, it squirts out this secretion, and this secretion contains a lots, lots and lots of different chemicals which protect the frog from um, all these nasties. So all of these chemicals are peptides, so they're basically small proteins, um, and these chemicals have a variety of different activities. So we've isolated chemicals which are antibiotics, anti-cancer agents, also chemicals which are antivirals, antifungal agents, and also down the bottom here, the two that I'm going to be talking to you about today, and we've, we've isolated chemicals which inhibit the formation of amyloid fibrils, and chemicals which inhibit the formation of nitric oxide. And these two things are very important disease-related processes. So, first of all, about nitric oxide. So these peptides all affect regulatory pathways in the body, okay? So you know that whenever you have communication going on in a cell, there's always a cascade and a pathway to the final product of that communication. So what our chemicals do is they inhibit that pathway, they stop that communication. And they do that by binding to a protein which is located in the cell, which is a regulatory protein called calmodulin and they stop it from being able to do its job in activating a nitric oxide production, okay? And when there is a lack of nitric oxide production, there are a variety of different diseases associated with that. And similarly, where there's an excess of nitric oxide production, there is a variety of different diseases associated with that. So inhibiting this nitric oxide pathway might be useful in trying to treat some of these diseases, like I've got listed here, stroke, heart attack, some inflammatory diseases, as well as Alzheimer's disease, okay? So linked onto that is amyloids, okay? So notice on the last slide, I had these pictures of these nice proteins, okay? Calmodulin and the calmodulin with the peptide bound to it. So when we have a protein in the body or in any organism, okay, it needs to fold, okay? It needs to fold into a particular structure, and that particular structure is encoded in its sequence, and it needs to be that shape to do its job. If it's not, it can't do its job, okay? So what these amyloid diseases have, we get misfolding. They don't form their proper structures, and they can't perform their normal job. And these amyloids, that we call them, um, form these long strands of proteins joined together, okay? And these long strands of proteins joined together are toxic, okay? and they're implicated in a number of diseases, um, like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, Huntington's, type 2 diabetes, and arthritis as well. So being able to prevent the formation of these amyloids is vital in trying to understanding these diseases and in trying to come up with a cure and preventative for these diseases. So that's what my research is basically about. So now I'm going to switch track and say something to you about what science is about generally, okay? So not only is science about doing research, but Science is also about promoting yourself, okay? So I was lucky enough last year to be interviewed by someone from the advertiser, where they profiled my research, and I was lucky enough to go over the zoo and have some photos with a frog, which was nice. So not only is it about doing your work, it's about selling your work, okay? And the other really interesting thing about this is the author of this article was actually a graduate from the MDD program as well. So you can see that not only is a chemistry name degree going to get you into research, there's so many other places that it can take you. Okay? So the one thing that I really need to stress to you guys, especially the first year, is if you're interested in research, talk to the academics. Find out what they do. Okay? Find out what their research interests are. Okay? 
because everyone has different research interests, and especially in first year, what they're lecturing, you to, lecturing to you about aren't necessarily their interests. So talk to them and find out what it is they do, okay? So research is a lot of fun. It's about doing the work. It's about selling your work, whether that's through media or through going to conferences and talking about your, about your work. And um, just as an aside, one thing that we're going to be trying to get you guys to do this year is to actually talk to some academics and talk to some staff and talk to other research students about what their research is all about. So what I'm looking for is a few students to send me an email, okay? That's my email address there, so write it down. Um, what we're looking at producing is basically a chemistry newsletter. So we're going to be producing a few of these this year. So if you just send me an email, what I'll do, I'll try to hook you up with someone. You can have a chat to them about what it is they do. Then just want something small written up, if that's all right. Um, and then we'll be publishing it on the web as well. So you can say, put on your resume that you wrote, a, you wrote an article for the chemistry newsletter, and it's good resume fodder. So that's basically it. Thanks for listening. <laughs>